All right, and welcome to Core Live, everyone. I'm Tops, aka Tasha, and today I'm joined by the incredible, the amazing, the very talented solo dev, and Steve. Perhaps I did not tell you this before stream, but you might be the number one Twitch chatter who has made me laugh like LOL in stream. How does that's, that feel? That's the goal, right? That's that's the goal. Is just to... <laughs> If, if I'm remembered for one thing in life, I think that'll be... That'll be <laughs> for making laugh. Tobs laugh. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, Steve has many talents, as we're about to find out. So we're going to uh, jump into some of his games. We're going to talk with him about how he got them made. And I think uh, without further ado, let's dive into one of your first games on Core, Steve. This is going to be uh, not Breakaway, but kind of a precursor to break away and maybe one of your other games? What? All yep. right, so I'm gonna uh, switch over to uh, the screen. We can she, oh my gosh, and I'm, I might make a lot of sh Steve type. I mean, you have to. <laughs> I if have you, to. If you don't, what's the point of the thing? <laughs> All right, so we're actually spectating uh, Steve's screen right now. And then I am going to post this link in chat for you. Um, now this is, the working title was Butterball, um, <laughs> which speaking of making me laugh, there we go again. Um, <laughs> so Steve, let's start off with um, what made you want to make games? Oh boy, uh, what made <laughs> me want to make games? Uh, yeah, so I mean like I've been a lifelong gamer um, and yeah. then you know, around that high school time, you start having the, the career day kind of thing where you're like, oh, what do I want to do? And let's, they make you like write an essay about what you want to do. Oh my God. And so mine was like, well, I love playing video games. I'd love to make games. Um, so that's, that's where like the reasoning or like the inspiration <laughs> for wanting to do it came. Um, but yeah. And then I, I kind of just stumbled my way along until I managed to convince somebody to give me a job making things. Um, oh my I gosh! So you actually work in the games industry. Uh, I work adjacent to it, I guess. I, would say. I did. I did. So I started out in the games industry. I started out working um, on a project called Blue Apprentice, and it was a, uh, a for a startup here in the Bay Area, and it was like a kids like science adventure game, um, educational kind of game. Um, it was really cool and something you know, edu education and all that is, is something I'm passionate about as well. Heck but yeah. Um, so it was, a, it was a cool mission, and it was a fun game project to work on and to, to learn the industry. Um, oh, and that's then, so interesting, because I feel like serious and educational games, probably wildly different game design than your traditional games. Yeah, it was it was fun to, like, figure out how to make it fun, because we were trying to do, like, you know, branching dialogues and, like, interesting crafting systems and, like, a rich storyline. Um that was all wow. centered around like science and learning. So it was, oh, it was fun. Awesome. Um, but then I kind of branched off from that and went into like the AR and VR industry. Oh my God. Um, side of, of kind of games. Um, so I've, I've done games like along the way, but I also do like simulations and just like projects for big companies and little companies that want to have like AR stuff in oh their portfolio. Oh my God. Oh, that's and awesome. And I do some robotic stuff. Um, but I'm looking to get back into games. I am. Heck yeah. My passion is the games. And Core satisfies that passion pretty darn well, I'd say. Oh, yeah. I love hearing that. So I have to say, though, I feel like um, <laughs> how you got into the games industry was a bit like, you know, that meme where it's like how to draw an owl and it's like step one, draw these two circles. <laughs> and then it's like draw the rest of the owl. Yeah. Um, so what happened in between you writing that essay where you're like, hey, I want to make games to like <laughs> that, actually like, being like oh i'm in the industry now that's so hilarious because that's <laughs> that's like literally the path it, it's I, I did this once on like some random like twitter thread that was trending but it was like you know show your path into the games industry and it was like okay high school um went to college for like two years um failed horribly because i was oh my uh, god because i was like <laughs> knee deep in in world of warcraft basically um <laughs> and just like made every excuse not to go to class um so don't do that kids um joined the military went like completely different direction joined the military wow. went to like infantry and snipers and deployed and, oh like, my god got crazy um into that and then like b 
became a bodyguard for a little bit. What? And then, <laughs> and then oh I, my like, god! Went back to school and was like, all right. Like I started dabbling with like YouTube tutorials and stuff about video game creation and programming and everything. So then I finally buckled down and uh, went back to school. Shout out to Cogswell alumni. Um, Heck yeah, Cogswell. And, uh, yeah, and then and then uh, the the rest is history. Oh my gosh! Wow, I love that. So I have to say, in Breakaway and Schleiders, um, those are two games that uh, don't have any gameplay involving like guns or whatnot is that like a specific choice because you're like i shot enough guns in real life and now i just want to play you know a, a little more fantastical game um kind of i mean yeah it's funny because like i remember when i was um when i was like i, I was really good at shooting and everybody um in, in real life and then everybody was all my gamer friends were like oh did you like learn that from playing all this counter-strike and stuff like with us back in the day <laughs> and it's like kind of i guess i don't know but uh... um but no like their gameplay was was more it was just something that i thought would be fun and, and viable on core and everything and i you know i don't know it wasn't like a i don't i don't like shy away from making mm, okay. shooter games or anything like that so not but... a conscious decision but just kind no. of how it ended up happening yeah, um yeah. Okay, so we're looking at this early version of Breakaway. Um, so w what was the uh, idea behind this project that kind of sparked it all? Um, so Breakaway itself has always been a like passion project for me. Um, it's something that I that I wanted. I've I've tried several times across several different engines to uh, to realize this like dream um, because. There was this old game, old-ish, like from 2016, 2017, um, called Breakaway that, that Amazon Game Studios had made that I went like semi-amateurly pro in oh. um, before they canceled it and like met a lot of really close gamer friends and just had like a really awesome community around it. Um, but then they shut it down because they're selfish. <sighs> and <laughs> <Boo>. <laughs> because money doesn't grow on trees, apparently, and they ran out. Um, but yeah, so I, I've always, and so that's the interesting thing, little factoid lore um, behind the names. Um, my name back then that I went by was Butta Butta Jam. Ah. And so then everybody was always like, oh, it's okay. Steve will just make Butta Ball, right? We always called oh it Butta Oh my Ball. God. Um, and I, because I could never figure out a better name for it, <laughs> I went with it and it like all the way up until like just recently where I was like, screw it, I'll just call it Breakaway. But I truly thought it would be butterball for forever i was just like yep butterball love it <laughs> capture the essence is the problem but yeah 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 okay so i we, i think we've seen a lot of this in progress map um do you want to jump into the real deal yeah well let me let me jump into sliders because this is kind of what oh, inspired yeah that's Schleider. right okay um so there was so a mechanic you up, had yeah. in here that ended up um totally yeah, inspiring so, one of your other games yeah if you look like when i hold down shift i i slide right and that was a big mechanic in breakaway that was like one of the most fun mechanics in there was this sliding mechanic um so and you can see it a little better if i'm not mounted, oh yeah but, here we go um <laughs> so you kind of slide across the ground we a lot of fun um and then but as i was playing dorado here i was mounted and i did it and a happy little bug where i hadn't taken into account somebody being mounted so i was like uh -huh. oh that's kind of fun to do mounted oh my god um so then i started to think of like especially because breakaway scope was me just starting to learn core breakaway scope was starting to get like okay this is a little bit much this is a little ridiculous let me learn the engine a little bit more oh. um, and get something that i can get out there and kind of get a feel for um the engine so um so i kind of started coming up with sliders um yeah so wow. I, can, I can switch over to that right now Heck yeah. Okay, and then I'll post the link in chat. Here is Sliders. Please join us. Um, and so that's so interesting. It was kind of this bug that inspired uh, this whole other game of yours. Now, um, what I thought was interesting was you said you thought the scope was getting too big. Um, and I think scope is something a lot of um, like new creators struggle with. How do you know when your project might be like you've bitten off more than you can chew? 
Um, yeah. I mean, I think it comes down to having a good plan going into it um, and kind of breaking down all of the systems that you're going to have into your game as much as possible before you before you actually like start developing on them because you know i look at you look at something like like breakaway where it's um there's two goals a ball there's like an in-match shop there's champions with champion classes all of those things um and so even at the service level that's a lot right but then you start breaking all those things down into like okay the match shop like everybody everybody on the server has to know when you make a purchase in the match shop and um your character has to know we have to update the UI to know that you're in the match shop. And oh, by the way, the death, like the death card has to know that you're um, what items the player had when they killed you and all these different things and uh. um, start coming to, coming out. And you're like, oh, well, OK, maybe this is like really a huge project. <laughs> um, maybe this is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. So that, that kind of happened along the way. Um, and I just it's like. I kind of came up with this and said, okay, I know I can do this eventually, but I think it'll be a lot easier if I um, kind of learn the ins and outs of the engine first. Oh, I love that. Um, so that's that's kind of like the progression of how that came about. Oh, that's so cool. And then uh, there's a few of like very intentional design decisions you made here um, that I think are really interesting, like intentionally putting in uh, skips and i'm just saying that to sound smart and like i know what the speed running community is <laughs> yeah. uh they're shortcuts um and i really like that you intentionally put those in um now when you're designing an obby are you good at obbies i have never like been a part of or tried obbies before coming to core <laughs> um but i you know i i kind of like and you mentioned the shortcuts and everything. I kind of like saw um, people playing other obbies and uh, like like um, oh it was it was uh, um, Tower of Terror by Nick yes, Foreman. Yes. And there was a big tournament around it, and I was like, oh, this is fun. Like I'm pretty good at this obby, I think. Um, and then I start seeing all the speedrunners and all the shortcuts and everything they're coming up with. And at first, you're like, oh well, they're just like totally ruining. <laughs> the idea behind that he wanted like behind all these all these courses but then i'm like oh well what if i just kind of embrace that and like put these shortcuts in and kind of had that be as like a like almost like a skill ceiling raise oh, of the that. actual hobby itself um so that's that's kind of it kind of changed my perspective on that and and how i can oh man i'm terrible um <laughs> on and how i can like embrace that um instead of kind of battling against it so to speak oh i really love that because yeah, um, there was a while where i was like people would find ways to break it and and you do this and i do this in a lot of games but people would find a way to break it and i'd be like no and i'd slap a collider somewhere or something to like stop them wow. <laughs> like you play it how i intended um but then i just yeah i just you know you start to embrace that and go okay well let's make sure they can't break break it but otherwise let's let them have some fun well so i just mentioned that i'm in a race with getch right so I, that was a system that I was trying to look for a way of um, kind of spicing up the gameplay and like making it more fun for multiple people. Because as a as an obby, you're generally just playing against yourself. It's just like a time trial or like trying to get your way through the course. Um, but for somebody who's good and, and more advanced, um, I wanted a way for them to be able to like interact with each other. So I came up with this challenge system um, where you can pull it up and challenge other players to a race and have it be like timed and um more i don't know more competitive i guess um and so i did um but that was that was like a, a really hard system for me especially like i mentioned like this was kind of my project to to learn the ins and outs of core and uh i think the chat like writing the challenge system ended up being the thing that um like pushed me to learn um core better Ooh. Um, but yeah, I mean, and the challenge system also just, I wanted a way for it to be seen as competitive and to have like tournaments and things. Like when we launched Sliders, we did a, a I hosted a tournament Heck for it. yeah, you did. So what was that <laughs> like? Um, cause I know, uh, Manticore will help you out with preparing your game for the tournament, but there is a, a fair amount you need to do as a creator as well. 
Yeah. Um, so there was there was like my tournament that I ran, which was um, sort of a more traditional like bracket style tournament mm-hmm. um, where we had a lot of players. And I think it was. Um, oh, my gosh, I can't remember his name now. Bronze got second, I believe. But um, it was like inside you or something or inside. Insert yourself. Insert yourself. There you go. <laughs> Insert yourself. Thank you. Uh, he ended up winning. Um, and so I had like a little small prize pool that I Aww. put together. And um, we did like a, a nice, fun, like bracketed tournament and, and sort of like single elimination kind of thing. And um, the game was really set up well for that. Like I mentioned with the with the challenge system, because you just, oh, who am I facing? Set up a challenge race. Whoever wins, wins and reports their score. Um, so that was like well set up for that kind of tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, but then we did the putt and slide tournament. Oh, uh, <clears> yeah. And that's where things got crazy. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because Tell me more. We we opened it up to like all of all the core player base and outside of the core player base and speedrunners and all of the like. Um mm. and that's where a lot of like the you know, play the game but don't break it kind of thing happened where I, I was ah. there was a lot of like, oh, we're exploiting this certain functionality or like I, I had like a I had like a little golf, like mini golf course at the beginning here in the lobby, I remember. And you like the first day that I put it in there, or the first hour that I put it in there, somebody managed to like jump up on it and then jump up on the platform, the final platform, and, <laughs> and finish the race in like eight seconds or something. Oh my gosh. Like, well, that's not very competitive. <laughs> so, <laughs> those are the times where like you have to reset the score and like and uh, go in there and like live hot fix the map and things like that. Oof, so, that's there was a lot stressful. of doing that. Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of was, but it, it was good. I mean, it, it, it opened, it showed a lot of holes of like the map and the game that I hadn't thought of before. And I don't know, in the at the end, it was good. Um, I think it created a little bit of friction in the tournament, but I think mm. overall, it was fun. Um, and it was a fun tournament. Yeah, I remember it. That And I really love the challenge system here. I think that's such a fun way of creating like um, interactions between players, even if there's not necessarily a ton of players like logged in at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And it, I also like, I wanted to make a game that, you know, rewarded you for being good um, and also, but also yeah. rewarded you for like knowing who was good. So in the challenge system, if a challenge pops up, all the other players in the game can place bets on who they think is going to win and they can gain extra coins. Oh, I, I didn't know that. What the heck? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, so, yeah. So I, I wanted a way for like everybody to kind of get involved and like, even if you suck at the game, you can still kind of have some fun checking out the people that are crazy good um, and see, you know, learn their strategies and all those things. But yeah, you want to talk about scope. That was where like this game was starting <laughs> off simple and then just started to kind of scope creep its way up to like this, fairly complex game truly um, but luckily it was like progressive enough that it didn't really shut anything down yeah kind of a l- linear scaling of scope yeah exactly <laughs> okay now speaking of uh games with a huge scope do you want to jump into breakaway now yes uh, let's heck. do it yeah okay guys so this is uh you already saw kind of the i want to say almost prototype work in progress um, earlier that uh, Steve was just hanging out in. Um, Now we're going to see what it turned into. And let me post the link here. I'm going to jump in first. I have to, I have to leave our our challenge match bronze. The the show goes on. Truly the show goes on. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And I just love, I think, um, like the opening screen and like the cinematics you have here and like the loading screen oh this hero selection screen is so cool is there this was a lot of fun to make yeah i was gonna say is there any like um behind the scenes tips or like things you learned while making this um scenes are gonna be awesome <laughs> i'm really yeah. happy with that because yeah a lot of this is like spread out across probably five different games like there's a chance like the try button here where you can try the champion out um there's the tutorial game that exists and all of those games have to have like all of the the code and the templates and everything for each of the champions and so it gets it's with oh. these just these four it's gotten pretty chaotic i guess to, to try to like, keep everybody together and keep all the games synced so scenes are going to be 
fantastic. It's like my next week or two is going to be just converting mm-hmm. everything over to scenes Heck um, and yeah. going back into breakaway. Okay. And then I, se- I selected arena, but do you want to try classic? Oh, you want to do arena? Yeah, no, let's jump into the arena. That's okay. fine. Excellent. I like it. It's a little bit, it's probably a little bit more buggy. But <gasps> oh no. I okay. Overall it's fine. I think overall it's fine. <laughs> let's see. And we can wait for this to like fill up if anybody else wants to jump into the arena. And so then you have um, different skins planned for each hero, it looks like. Yeah. So um, some of the skins are inspired by like old concept art from the game um, of stuff that they never were able to do. Like the the Lumberjack Thorgrim skin um, is one that, that was never actually like realized in the game, in the old game. Um, and then like this one, the Disco, uh, Disco Alona skin, was one that a community member, one of our community guys in, in, the, in the old game had kind of concepted himself and submitted and obviously never got made because it was just random person um, concept art. But wow. um, but I did. <laughs> so you have f- f- fans making concept art? Yeah, yeah, kind wow. of. It's, it's oh like my God. It's going from the old community members and, and shout outs to, uh, to B-Boy. He, he gave the Disco Alona skin concept up, but yeah. We got me and Getch. Okay, I is that you? Oh yeah, oh, here cool. I am. Um, I totally didn't realize. Um, <laughs> this is a completely different arena. Yes, so that's uh, what. I... <laughs> just a different game mode. Apologies. It's a different game mode on a different map, and um, eventually, you know, like I said, with the scene, the new scene system, I'm going to bring this map as an option for the classic. Um, and vice versa and have the classic one as an option for this map but um yeah this was again like some concept that um had come out or had been like buried for the game like it never saw oh i got you it never it never saw the light of day um in the game realizing the game itself it was just like one picture screenshot that they had um that they had come up with and um yeah so i took that and kind of extrapolated on it and ran with it. And I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Yeah. Shout outs to core CC. Cause oh, like, heck yeah. This was right around the skybox challenge that happened where all these <gasps> cool skybox skyboxes came out. All right. Um, but yeah. So how does this game mode, um, differ from the classic one? Yeah. So, um, this one was where I got to do a little bit more of like, not just copying design um, and just kind of coming up with some stuff on my own. Oh, nice. But um, so this one, obviously, like we see, is just like straight deathmatch, okay. um, more or less. Um, the uh, so there's a collapsing like circle, kind of like a battle royale would have, um, that keeps matches you know within a certain time allotment. Um, obviously, there's no ball in this yes. one. There's no goals. So I think that's uh, that's probably the major difference. Um, but I made it that way and without the ball and everything in this arena mode for a few reasons, mostly related to core. Um, but I wanted to support something that's like more sort of drop in, drop out, um, and more oh. like tailored towards um, small small player sizes or small team sizes. Almost for more casual players. Yeah, because Breakaway is really made, the, the classic mode is really made for 4v4 like semi-competitive games. Um, so I wanted something that you can just kind of like jump in and not have to think about, okay, where's the ball all the time? And like how much time is left on the round and all these things that you're kind of constantly trying to figure out as you're playing Breakaway. Oh, um, victory screen. We did it, Getch. We made it. Nice. 2v wonder to death. <laughs> um, MVP. What? <laughs> That's with right. one kill oh yeah because i it's, um... it's, it's always hard coded i hard code myself as mvp of all the games <laughs> ah i see okay i'll remember that for when <laughs> i make a game okay and then let's uh definitely check out classic yeah that one hopefully we have viewers feel free to hop in we need eight. yes we need eight people i'm calling on you core chat all right that one's more of a queue system so we can do other stuff we can look at other things here Ooh, okay. um but yeah so that was tailored more towards the the kind of more casual audience and um 
like I said, the drop in drop out is a big core core thing. That's, you know, I'm lear- I was like, originally I'm like, well, forget that. I'm just going to like make the game. And if, if there's not enough players, there will be someday. And it's like, well, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's not my fault that there's not players. Like I'll just make this cool game. And then it's going to just die and never see the light of day and get buried. So ah. um, trying to find ways to like adapt to the platform as well has yeah. been cool. Oh, um, I really like that. And it's something I think everybody should do. If you have this really cool game design that doesn't uh, play nice on core as a platform, and maybe it will someday, but it won't right now. Um, see if there's ways you can modify it or, or you know keep the same essence, but make it play nice with core. And then, uh, so h- how long have you actually been working on Breakaway slash Butterball? Well, um, I guess if you take into account like <laughs> a few years, if you consider like other doing it in, like I mentioned in other engines. Yeah. Um, ah. So like I had really tried hard because I'm a Unity developer um, oh. by day. So, you know, trying it out in Unity, failing hard there. Um, trying it out like in like there was a top down version that I was thinking about trying to make for like uh, itch.io and like. I don't know. I've tried all these different engines and all these different types of designs for it. Um, and then I found core, but on core specifically, I started it probably almost about a year ago <clears throat> and then, uh, took, took some time off from it for sliders and then, and the boot camp, obviously. And then, um, got back into it, like probably in February or March this year and put out a, a good version of it. I'd say, I think in May or yeah, I think May. May, and then you've just kind of been iterating on it mm-hmm. since then. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, in terms of like iterating on it, how do you decide like what feedback from players you want to incorporate? And I know you touched on like um, seeing how players were breaking the game or breaking the game and kind of knowing what elements to pick from that. So I'm, I'm really curious how you decide, uh, you know, what, what, you know do do players say that has merit yeah um so i mean specifically for breakaway i one i focus on the bugs um (laughs) anything anything that's like breaking their experience or or shutting down the fun of the game um is something that i focus on first um but then after that um it's kind of now at this point where i'm implementing some new champions and things but now i'm also starting to think about player feedback and everything because my goal with the game was to get the the original design implemented of, of the game um, and then to kind of say, OK, now that I have this like starting starters block of, of where um, where the game kind of ended, you could say um, now I can kind of go in there and, and start tweaking things and saying, OK, is the shop really like are all the items in the shop really that good? Well, let's go in and like figure out which ones are, are not played well or not played with as much. Mm-hmm. Um, those kind of things. So getting that feedback is super valuable for me at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, early on, it was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get the first I need to get the <laughs> game out. I need, to, I need to like get this yeah. original base version in. But um, but yeah, now we can have some fun with it, I think. Excellent. And I've put out the call for a few more people to hop in here with us. Now, um, oh, what did you just say? That um, so you're wondering if you have to get the minimum viable product out before you can kind of start paying attention. Oh, heck yeah. Um, before you can start paying attention to what players are saying and kind of going in and fine tuning everything. Um, and then it sounds like you kind of uh, have to put yourself in the player's shoes here. How do you find out like what players are using in game? Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting because it's, it, it's not like apparent right now in in core i think to like get those kind of analytics but there is a really cool cc shout out to funnel analytics yeah um, yeah that uh that helps with that at least a little bit right um so let's see i'll just play it long enough um so funnel analytics helps you by knowing kind of what players are clicking on and and doing in your game um so i've used that to see like what shop items are getting purchased or um, you know, how how many people are actually like joining the lobby or queuing up or going into 
the tutorial, how many people are coming back after they've played the tutorial, that kind of thing. Um, and it's been helpful. It's it's definitely been helpful. I was is this just gonna break on us? That's cool. Oh no, it's not. Whew, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> we made it. Okay. Um, oh my yeah. gosh. Are there any like metas in terms of like what you buy for attack and defense here? Oh, let's see. Okay, so you're playing Argus, so either like attack or armor is good to start with. Ooh, heck yeah. Okay. Um, it depends on if you want to. It's obviously like if you want to be more mobile or, or I mean, uh, tanky or um, offensive. Ooh, I'm gonna go for more tanky just because I know how I play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need that extra uh, armor. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, oh yeah. so... The Argus is the free one, and so there's a lot of Arguses in this game right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then I need to take this over to oop, my side. Um. So yeah, then there was this uh, there was this shield mechanic that was kind of like one of the last ones to, to get implemented. And it's funny, it was funny like making the game and... and you know, going through all the uh, different systems that were in the game, because like I said, going through, um, oh, we take to the enemy base. Um, oh, the enemy going, base. Okay, <laughs> going through the... Uh, oh, I've been helping the enemy team. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> I need, so, and that's that's another thing, is like playing with, with players, especially players who haven't played before, it's it's finding those things that they're, um, that they're doing that are like not immediately clear and trying to find ways of making it clear, right? So, like, if you're taking the, the relic, and a lot of people do that, you take the relic back to your base, you go, okay, well, is there some way that I can, like, do something to make it clear that you need to take it to the enemy base for a new player? Um, so that's why playtests are, are super helpful. And how do you uh, organize a playtest? It... Um, yeah, it's... It's tough, um, with, <laughs> but it's just kind of putting the call out like as many places as you can, whether it's Twitter or my Discord for the game or um, um, core Discord, you know, reaching out specifically to, to players or devs or anything. Um, yeah. But that is a, that is a, a tough one. Yeah, uh, it sounds like um, utilizing the communities uh, you're a part of kind of crucial to you getting people to jump in now do you have like a and a survey questions you ask players after a play test yeah it like my kind of go-to survey questions that i guess you could say are, are like they're, they're pretty simple it's it's about like what was some what, like what was something that was fun what was not fun Ooh. Um, what was something you wanted to do but you felt the game didn't let you do. Um, and I'm totally blanking on like the fourth thing, but it's something related to that. Um, of like, what was something that like you th think you should be able to do in a game or like what was something that the game let you do that you weren't expecting to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, oh, I love those questions. Oh, round one territory. We did it. I know everybody's sitting over there. See, you guys don't get the territory. Oh, they couldn't pick it up. That's probably why everybody was surrounded by the ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I think I'm going to get some attack as well this time. Excellent. And for all of the items also, they have like four different tiers to them. And the, the final tier has like a, an extra bonus effect. So like it, it can be good to um, spread the... Oh, that's really weird. So this is why play tests are good. Um, I oh yeah, I am stuck uh, sliding. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I said, this game the the scope of it is so huge, and like there's so many systems that it's especially you know I realize as a solo dev that it's really hard to keep track of everything, and and um, you know you you kind of do your best with it, um, but. And it's also one of those games where you, you need. Yeah, it looks like we win again. <laughs> you need those. You need a lot of play tests to get it right. Um, but that was one thing. Like coming up or having the original game as like the the kind of background for it was really great because and really interesting because I got to see as I'm implementing these systems. I'm like, oh, like 
this must have been really hard for these guys to <laughs> do. <laughs> does it, it does make you appreciate um, yeah. other games. Oh, I'm like, thinking of yeah, it's just it's just rough. Not to keep going on about Fortnite, um, but they have this new parachute in there that's like a transparent bunny balloon. And I was like looking at it and I was just like, I know how technically difficult it is to get a material to right. like be see-through and have all of these properties. And I was just like, oh man, I appreciate this so much more. Right, so I right. have to say, um, so I heard that going into the games industry kind of ruins games for you once you learn how they're made. Cause then every time after you're, you're always going to be noticing like how people have done things in a game. Do you find that's true? Um, I mean, if you let it ruin it, I guess. It can, but I I don't know. I I haven't found that for myself to be true. Like, I still really enjoy games if they're if they're well made and heck yeah. Um, yeah, it's just it makes the only thing that it does is it makes me like think about those kind of things more, but yeah. not like in a judgmental way. I just go, oh, like that's really interesting how they did this, or oh, I wonder what like the alternatives to this were that they were coming up with at the meeting, you know, or those those kind of questions. Um, yeah, and if you see a, if you see an awesome mechanic like like Val Shinobi said, if you see an awesome mechanic, you're like, oh man, I need to find a way of like putting that into my game. Or, yes. or I do that a lot with like Roblox games and other core games. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I need to figure out a way of implementing this in mine. Or like, this is why this game is doing so well. That kind of thing. Oh, Bronze Sword's trying to. He's murdering. Base camp spawn camp me. <laughs> This game is like breaking as <laughs> more and more as time goes on. Everything's just starting to fall apart. Wonderful. But we're going to keep winning. You know what? OBS didn't want to work today. Black Magic didn't want to work today. It kind of feels like the universe is saying we shouldn't have streamed, Steve. We but we you stay know winning. what? We defy the universe. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, and then, okay, I'm going to ask you a very difficult question. Um, and I don't expect you to like, like, I don't think I would be able to answer this question uh, okay. very coherently. So I'm going to say no judgment for whatever answer you're able to come up with. But how do you determine what doesn't feel right in a game or like what needs to be balanced, like with the abilities and stuff? Because I'm like, <laughs> for me, I'm always just like, mm, I kind of like how this feels more than this thing, or I really don't like this, but I can never, sometimes it's very hard to like put into words why that is. Yeah. Um, how do you find out what doesn't feel right? I, maybe I open this question up to chat. This actually isn't maybe. one I think I've asked before, just because I'm always like, well, I don't know how to answer that but then i was like steve is smart so he'll answer it <laughs> yeah um it's i think there's a there's a lot of different ways you can approach that um whether it's like you know taking a hard look at the numbers or just seeing uh like like taking a look at like the damage per second of somebody um like let's say argus right he's got a bunch of abilities that do a bunch of damage and in a vacuum he might do you know 250 damage per second right uh -huh. but um and so if somebody if he walks up to somebody and they don't know what is happening um and he just unloads everything he can almost like full full combo to death oh uh, if you're standing there so um or at least like half of your life right so but then you look at like all of the other aspects of the game that are happening yeah we can just turn this into a dance party i think that's probably, <laughs> that's probably the safer bet rather than continuing to break the game <laughs> Um, but yeah, you look at, you look at like all of the other factors of the game and you say, oh, okay, well, you know, if somebody's coming in and like stunning somebody and setting them up for that, then that's, that's one, one thing. But if somebody's like using their escape abilities and getting away, well, all of a sudden his, his damage per second over time kind of goes way down. Um, so I don't know. You just, you just like look at those factors to, to figure out if something's broken or if, if somebody's just complaining about it because they don't get it. Um, and if they don't get, if that's the case, then why don't they get it? And how can you make them get it better? Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's, I that's love that. part of the answer, I guess you could say. Yeah. So looking for when things don't make sense or, oh, oh my God, Steve, this is going back to the questions you ask your play testers. That is how, uh, 
incredible. Those are like little red herrings for like, oh, this should be rebalanced or not red herrings because red herrings are misleading. What's like a, right. <laughs> a clue, clue like an clue. Act yeah, mm. a clue, a real clue, not a fake clue. Um, <laughs> okay. Should we, I love that we're, uh, we've set aside our differences and we are embracing dance now. Yeah. Well, well, no. <laughs> well, uh, for the most part, uh, <laughs> There we go. Okay, Perfect. We the game. We did ah, it. and uh, we've won. Excellent. Uh, should we jump into your latest and greatest game, Make Them Fly? Absolutely. Yeah, Heck we have to. Yes. All right. Oh my gosh. And everybody's still in a seated position at the MVP screen. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay. And then I'll uh, submit this link to y'all in chat. And hopefully this is not uh, going to be indicative of like Steve, maker of broken games. Oh my goodness! I <laughs> I feel like everyone else in chat uh, who is also a creator completely uh, understands the position <laughs> you're in right now. They're like, ah, ooh, join match? Heck yeah! Okay, so I am going in blind here um, because I did not find someone to check this out with me last night in the... <laughs> well, watch this and learn how to play. Oh, okay, match in progress. Pushy push. <laughs> Polly fall. <laughs> you Love it. it. Oh! Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. Oh yeah, Bronze, don't jump on that because I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this Bronze is very intriguing. Oh my okay. god. Yeah, the game collapses. Oh, 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 no! oh, oh, my God, I hit my head on a, <laughs> I think that was my own stone. This is fascinating. It's down to this. It's all down to this. Oh, my God. Oh, oh okay. So I feel like. This game has a very obvious inspiration, but I'm going to ask you the question anyways. What was the inspiration for this game? Uh, yeah, so inspiration can come from anywhere. And that's another, that's another, well, okay, so Game of Thrones, right? Um, <laughs> Yay. But that's another, that's another thing is that like, as a game developer, you start getting inspiration from like anywhere, right? <laughs> Truly. So, you're watching Game of Thrones and like the moon door scene happens and he's like, make the bad man fly, mommy. Um, and I go, gosh, like that would be a fun game to just like run around and try to not try to like, <laughs> knock people out of the moon door. And, oh, my God. Yes. Gosh darn it. It, it make is. That possible. <laughs> AJ says, wait, you guys get inspiration. <laughs> oh, AJ. <laughs> OK, and I do. Yeah, you did include. I thought I saw the. Um... Oh creepy uh inhabitants of this castle as well very nicely done in core yeah that was a uh, shout out to standard combo we uh those are all randomized npcs using the the community content really oh wow um yeah and there's like a little there's like a silly little dialogue that happens um between the queen and the and the child oh i fell through the door <sighs> gg bronze yeah, some. I think in my latest update, I moved to the victory area, so you just kind of fall through. <laughs> um, oh yeah, none of you guys are prestige, so stream gets to check out the the VIP boom boom room. Oh my god, stream! I hope you're enjoying this exclusive sneak peek at the boom boom room. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can go in here and. and I have the big TV out in the uh, out in the main lobby. There's like the big TV you can watch the oh match. Oh my off. god! And then in this one, you can see the stream will get to see the match from from this perspective. Oh, that is so cool! Uh, while I idle here and and gain some coins, just for being awesome. Oh yeah! Gosh, I. I love that the arena shrinks. This is like a bite-sized battle royale. Yeah. Yeah, that was an interesting one to do too, because oh. 
Vile Shinobi saw themselves out. <laughs> <laughs> it's always there's the, that. So that was the other thing that um, like playtests are awesome. Oh, everybody playtests because when I first like launched this um, and I put it public and like had a couple people playing, um, there was no cinematics. There was no like explanation or anything. And literally everybody, the first thing that they would do every time they would play. Oh, I is, sorry, I won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Champion. Heh <laughs> heh. Um, the first thing everybody would do as soon as they jumped into the match is they would run to the moon door and jump through it and fall down and die. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I was like, no, no, no. That's not the point of the game. <laughs> Why is that? That is such like, um, I don't know. Whenever I see like fire or something in a game that looks yeah. dangerous, I'm always like, ooh, I wonder like what this does. And then I always just proceed to like run into it and die. What? <sighs> and it's lit up. It's like the only thing that's lit. <laughs> Right in the in the arena, so everybody's like, "Ooh, shiny, shiny," and they just jump through it and die. So I was like, "Okay, I need to do something to like make people know that it's scary to go through there." So Ooh, yeah. I a little bit of that guy. Yeah, how do you de-incentivize players from doing something? I I mean, <laughs> sorry, that I'm. I'm it's a good question. Um, oh, I saw that, Steve. Yeah, well, I, you know, I took the light off for one. Uh, <laughs> so, and then I, I, you know, I, I did some more like the the, the way that they flash. Um, that was a little bit more messaging that I put around like the the collapse of the arena areas. Um, so they they kind of flash red, and you're like red bad. Oh my god! Oh no, Val yeah. Shinobi! Why? Yeah. Oh, Steve wins. Nicely done. I have to, I, so I have to maintain my position on the leaderboards as both the most losses mm. and the most wins. <laughs> oh, I love that. And then we can each <laughs> see like our own little. Oh, prestige. Yeah, this was really fun grade. to do. It was like everybody having their own little like pylon in the in the arena or in the lobby, so you can see everybody's stats. I'm definitely gonna add like more yeah. stats to that to make it more fun. But little little like customizations. And I yeah, I hit my head on one of these things on my way down last time, which <laughs> I, <laughs> I that, really so that love. Was a, that was a specific choice too, was to make the the lobby be below, so you would like see <sighs> falling bodies come down if like there's a match in progress. You're just kind of chilling, what like checking everything out, and all of a sudden Tob's body falls down in front of you. <laughs> Heck yeah! Oh yeah, I guess I could yeah stand below and wait for um. Yeah. people to drop off truly oh, and then is this like this is a little obby area in your uh yeah just like i think it's always good to have something mildly entertaining for <laughs> players to do um, if they're not in a match or, though. or busy watching bodies plummet from the sky <laughs> <laughs> excellent so do you have a favorite game of yours that you've worked on because i feel like you have a few different ones now oh man i mean so breakaway is and it always will be just like a, a passion project that i always want to see made like if somebody were to make breakaway and make it better than me i'd be like yes please oh. because i just i just want to play the game <laughs> i miss it um but yeah i mean i think right now obviously like this is this is really fun for me i think sliders was really fun um especially when we were doing you know tournaments and things around it um i mean yeah it's hard to pick i don't know i don't know i'll just say breakaway i look because i yeah. love it so that's that's a <laughs> hard question the hardest it's definitely the hardest like to implement oh, I, um, sometimes i feel like the things that are most difficult to me are the things i end up um yeah like yeah being most proud of i guess that makes sense unless i don't yeah. like overcome my struggles and then i'm just reminded of my failure <laughs> until well yeah until, until it all breaks on stream yeah, and, you know, yeah. Live, and, then you're like oh, God, no. I mean, like, <laughs> Ooh. oh oh and then file shinobi says i died to kill you tobs lol lol i hope it was a worthy sacrifice <laughs> oh and then we have you, but crouching is disabled and so there's no corpse disrespecting in this game gosh i can't believe buck monster isn't here by the way because i feel like I he's know. always asking for shoves well shout out to him because that was like something that really helped the game his cc kit oh. um, is in use right now the the hop to drop push kit heck yes and then if you're open to taking questions from chat i see we oh. have one from tron volta 
Tron asks, how long did it take you to make this game? Um, this one, I mean, in the in the grand scheme of things, relatively quick. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I would, I think, probably a month or two months now that oh, it's wow. been. I think since. Yeah, actually, because I did it sort of like while the invitational stuff was happening. Wow. Like the when it was first going, like the first applications and things were happening. Not that this was like an invitational application game, but that's just like how I reference it in my head. Yeah, I, gosh, and it just you just happened to release it the oh no, Ron Sword. <laughs> oh my God, you shoved me and I fell so hard I got to the terrain through the floor um and so you just happened to release it uh like the week before your core creator spotlight interview i mean and... that might have been like a, a push to get it you know oh. a good state but yeah yeah no it was, it was it was pretty it was pretty good timing honestly to yeah. have it be able to come out yeah this is oh this is so fun it, it really is like a little i guess i say it's a battle royale because i like the constricting arena yeah, yeah. It, it's, you know, last man standing kind of thing. It's yeah, little elements of VR. Okay, and then I have, okay, two last questions for you. Um, I noticed you have the default for this game be players are opted out of a match. Is there um, specific intention or design behind that? Yeah. Um... I never want to like if somebody's in the lobby and they're doing something like they're exploring um, mm -hmm. or they're they're in a shop menu or something. I never want to just be like, well, you're playing the game now. Good luck. <laughs> um, uh -huh. So I always want to yeah. err on the side of like letting them do the thing that they wanted to do. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I like that. So, yeah, letting them letting them sit around in the lobby or if they would just want to watch matches or whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I really like that, especially as someone who kind of loads into games sometimes, and then I'm like, oops, I have a meeting, and I forget I'm in-game, yeah. AFK, ruining it for other people. <clears throat> okay. Oh, Gambit! <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, and then uh, last question, and this is the hardest one I ask every core creator who comes on what are your favorite games on core that are Hell, not Hell yours <laughs> that was an easy answer and i have to say a great one too yeah who else has been no, enjoying yeah. Hellbreach here me i i recently got so i did i did think like way too much time i don't remember the name off the top of my head but it's the the new like fox game Oh, valley of the foxes by night valley of the foxes mm. i i think like so much time into that recently <laughs> um, because I, I was just like, oh, let's check this out, and then started collecting coins. And whatever, for whatever reason, I mean, obviously it's successful, but that is so addicting to me. I remember oh playing gosh. that and like the what was that muscle game, like the, oh. the lifting game, and I just sat there clicking my mouse, yeah, and I was like, muscle an hour mania. Later, yeah, that an hour was... later, I'm sitting there just like, why am I still doing this? <laughs> oh gosh, you know, I love games that make you question why you're playing it. I think that's yeah. like ultimate good design is i'm like i don't understand why i'm having fun <laughs> but it is so but much somehow fun. it's happening <laughs> yeah I mean, it's, so that that's uh I really do but hellbreach is just like the gold standard of core right now in my opinion Ooh. the the ui and the, the game design and all of it is just awesome oh wonderful well great answers to that last question and then steve if you can believe it we have already been streaming for an hour ah oh, it's already I... done so uh folks if you could just show a little love and chat to steve for coming on uh especially because we had so many technical difficulties setting up this stream um and then indeed while we were streaming um so Steve, thank you so much for coming on. This was a true joy to kind of delve into your mind and um, yeah, awesome. learn uh, tips and tricks for creators, uh, explore your thought process behind your games, especially from someone who has uh, been in the game industry and has been working in it um, for a while. Uh, I really appreciated getting to hear your uh, thoughts and ideas and I know everyone else in chat did too, as I can see. <laughs>
<laughs> yes. Thank you, Steve. Indeed. All right. Um, Steve, I'm going to close out the stream. Uh, if you have any closing thoughts, now is your time to share them. Oh, man. Uh, well, I mean, the community is awesome. Shout out to Manicore uh, in general. You guys are putting out an awesome product, and, uh -huh. and um, everybody that puts things on CC and this game wouldn't be possible without all the things that are on CC. So, Yay, CC um, creator! I have a list of them in the, in the info for the game. Shout out to all those people. Um, but yeah, and, and thanks for having me. This was so much fun, and, and I've always wanted to be on Core Live. Oh, heck yeah. Well, uh, welcome, and thank you for coming on, Steve. And uh, chat, uh, I'll be seeing you later. 3 p.m., we're going to be voting on our theme for our Battle Royale game we're making on Core Live. Okay, stay tuned, folks, uh, but we're signing off now. Bye. Bye, guys.